amazing. We love what you're doing in the community. We want to come buy a car from you. We want to get an oil change at your dealership. Your community is absolutely going to love you. And it doesn't matter what platform you're on. You could be on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, all social media platforms. You will literally be all over the place. And not only will you have ads running, but your own staff is going to be promoting your brand and promoting themselves within the dealership and within the business. So it's like running an ad times a hundred fold because your entire staff is participating in the process. I've traveled all over North America. I've trained Toyota. I've trained Nissan. I've been to driving sales. I've been to women in auto. I get hired as a speaker for conferences at universities all over the country. And I can help change the trajectory of your dealership right now. Hey, if you miss this live, you can you can listen to us wherever you get your podcast. Hey, if you miss this live, you can you can listen to us wherever you get your podcast. Hello, this is Ian Nethercott with the Auto Hub Show, and I'm here at a SodaCon in beautiful Baltimore, Maryland area. We're actually in uh, Hanover, Pens uh, Hanover, Maryland. Sorry, not Hanover, Pennsylvania, not to be confused. And we're here at the Live Convention Center to talk a little bit about data can suck, we fix it at OneVision.ai. So I guess the big question, since there's been a lot of AI for a while, uh, especially this year, has been a lot of focus globally on AI technology. Maybe you can introduce yourself, first of all, talk a little bit about why data can suck, that kind of thing, and how you guys fix it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Joe Duchesne. I'm the Chief Product Officer at OneVision. So really working with clients and our developers to make sure that we're providing the, the best solutions for them, both now and uh, in the future uh, as, as new technologies develop. Uh, so data can suck in any industry, but especially in automotive, because you see so many walled garden uh, development uh, styles where one company will have multiple products that maybe they interface with each other, maybe they don't because there was an acquisition and they never put in the development work to make it integrate with their other products, but then they don't integrate with other vendors' products. So a, a dealer could have five, six different softwares in their dealership, and if they're not talking to each other, it's really hard to get the information you need out of it. Just see if things are working. What can I do better? How can I improve things? Uh, and so, uh, you know, there's a saying that that is only uh, valuable if you use it. You know, you can have all the data in the world, but if you're not putting it to use, then it's just taking up server space, basically. Uh, and so that's the, the main problem that we're seeking to solve in uh, automotive is just the, the lack of uh, free flow of data and the ability to take data from whatever tool you're using or whatever side of your business and actually put it to use uh, without, you know, the investment of you know, dozens of man hours just to sort through it. So four by six uh, little paper cards are not the way to store data or use it? I've heard that those are going out of fashion, yeah. <laughs> so like shoe boxes full of like cards are not a, pro are a problem these days? I'm, I'm sure there are still uh, <laughs> some uh, dealer principals out there who, who would who want to stick to that paradigm. But yeah, we're definitely seeing a, a strong shift to uh, trying to leverage data. And along with that, uh, you know, happily over the last year, uh, we've seen more more data providers opening up APIs to the public or uh, letting dealers decide how they're going to to use the data that in the end they're paying to generate. So dealers, thanks for that. So dealers that maybe don't really understand data or maybe aren't sophisticated enough or maybe afraid of it or maybe just when you talk about algorithms and data and data lakes and data cleaning and data in general don't get what they already have in their dealership maybe not executed well, where do you start that conversation? Uh, well, where we, we find it most effective to start that conversation uh, on the budget sheet. You know, when dealers are planning their budget for the month, uh, you'll hear uh, them describe things as costs. And one of the reasons is they can't take the money that they're investing in a certain tool or platform and see the return on that investment. So starting at that conversation where it, you know, these uh, you know, cars.com or your website or your Google Ads campaign, it's not just a cost. That should be an investment that you're making. And if like any investment, you want to return. Uh, and so uh, starting the conversation where they just can't, they don't have the data in front of them to be able to make those decisions based on whether they're profiting off a source. So showing that that bottom line impact that having the correct data in front of you can make. You mean leaving money on the table isn't a good idea? It's not, and it's something dealers really don't like to do. Right. Uh, but if they can't see it, then it, they can't they can't know if hey I spent twenty thousand dollars on Google Ads and I made fifty, 
or I spent twenty thousand dollars on Google Ads and it it didn't bring in any new business. Uh, they sort of have to uh, make assumptions or go on how it feels when they make changes. And so you see dealers making changes a lot more often than they probably need to because they they really just don't know if what they're doing is working or not. So what about dealers that say I work with you guys? What kind of results have they seen? Like what what are some wins you can talk about? Uh, so we work with uh, several large groups. Uh, this the software is really ideal for an enterprise level dealer group with 20, 30 stores. Uh, so with uh, one of our clients, they have two uh, primary marketing managers that go out to the different stores. Uh, and the feedback we got him from him was that it saves him a week, a month. Because you know the month ends and they spend the first week of that next month just bringing in the reporting and compiling everything to then go out to the stores and just talk about what happened last month. So instead being able to just take his laptop, open it up, and have the reporting there, he can spend that week making adjustments to the current month, uh, making recommendations, analyzing that data as opposed to just putting it together. Uh, and so, you know, saving that time uh, ends up saving money. There's a financial impact to freeing up your, your staff to do other things, to work on other areas, uh, those sort of long-term projects that, you know, no one has time to do in a dealership. Everyone's always busy. So giving them... Uh, that reporting time back uh, has been a, a huge help with uh, several of our larger enterprise clients. Fantastic. So how does someone get started? What are the uh, what are the steps? How do you work with dealers? How does that work? Yeah, so uh, we really do um, approach each dealer group as a as a unique opportunity. Uh, every dealer group, uh, they might have the same providers and be seeing totally different results or using them in different ways. So uh, starting off, we uh, get their, you know, the basic information about the dealerships they want to add, uh, what uh, major platforms they're using uh, for their, their CRM and their DMS. And then uh, the first step is just hooking up their GA4 and their CRM because we often see that those two uh, software suites that every dealer is going to have, often there's no way to correlate that data in place. So just being able to correlate the people that are coming into the website where they're going, when they're turning into leads, and then eventually sales and gross profit uh, is something that uh, could be immediately valuable in decision making. Uh, and then once that is all set up, matched, uh, and displaying the way that the dealer wants to use it, because that's the important thing is, uh, you know, someone might want to have uh, their group site in the referral category, or they might want to have it in digital marketing because that's where they're driving their ad spend. Uh, that's when we start working with the, bringing in their other third-party data. So after the data is clean, after the problems are solved, um, what else can a dealer do in terms of what other services you guys provide? So one of the, uh, the challenges to adoption is uh, just getting people within the dealership to log in. You know, if you're a, a marketing manager for a 20-store group, you're going to love having One Vision because it's going to make it so much easier to see uh, just what's happening across the group. But if you're a, a used car manager at one of the stores in that group, getting a login, login, getting trained on it, having to filter the data, navigate, are they going to do it? Do they want to do it? It makes it hard. So uh, we created a, a report builder within One Vision so you can design custom reports so that it's only the KPIs and data that you want displayed in the way you want it. And then it can be a scheduled send to their, their email address. So rather than trying to drive adoption through this you know, entire staff of a dealer group, it's, okay, what data does that person need to do their job, make decisions? Okay, we'll just get them that. They don't have to worry about logging in and navigating and, and learning the software. So making it simple for them to do their job better and providing the data to empower that and that way grow the business and also drive profit and return. Yeah, and, uh, and transparency. You know, It's one of those things where... Uh, if you're getting that information, you're able to look at it every week, there's no way to really say, you know, uh, sort of um, pass, the, pass the buck on what's, what's going on in the, the dealership. It's not the website's fault. It's not the chat's fault. Or maybe it is, and that's what it's telling you, and that's where you can uh, have those conversations and actually move in a, a concrete direction. Well, thanks for taking the time today. Obviously, if you're taking a look at data in your dealership, or if you're not, and you maybe should be, uh, check out onevision.ai, real-time intelligence. And what's the best way for dealers to reach out to you? Uh, yeah, they can visit our website, uh, and they can book a, an initial demo where we can go through the, the software and also talk about how, how they would 
want to use it, how it could serve them, uh, because we pride ourselves on custom development and uh, really adapting to uh, specific clients' needs. So scheduling that uh, initial conversation through the website would be the best way. Thanks very much. Hey, thank you very much for, yeah. for talking. Right.